With regards to religion, it helps you deal with people. It helps, helps you put people where they belong. Believers, people who accept the truth, people who reject the truth, and people who reject the truth but pretend to be believers. This is how people are divided. And again, we, I said last week, this basically applies to your personal life. This is in religious terms. In personal terms, you will find people who are truthful in your dealings. They're honest with you. And they're nice. This is the best people to deal with. And there are people who just disrespect you, hate you for no reason. They just, they just dislike you for no reason. That's it. Or maybe there could be a reason, but you can, you can never get on with them. Clear, and they're clear. They're not trying to pretend. But there are people who dislike you, maybe hate you, okay? But they pretend to be your friends. And you know, these are the people who will let you down when you need them, and when you count on them. These are the people who will stab you in the back. These are like the hypocrites. So this classification is universal, by the way. You can take it and understand, you know, how humanity works. What is the fourth type of people? And that's interesting. And the fifth type of people. Let me start with the fifth. The fifth is mentioned in Surah Al-A'raf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, although these people are an extension of believers, but they have done so much evil. Okay? Allah says, in the day of judgment, there will be people whose good deeds and evil deeds will match. So they're not going to paradise. And they're not going to the hellfire. Where are they going? Washo? <laughs> There's a mountain. There's a mountain. In the middle between paradise and hellfire, it's called Al Araf. And the people, there's no washrooms by the way. And people, these people will wait there for a while. Ashab al Araf, they will wait there for a while. They will look at the people of paradise and say, Oh Allah, please allow us into paradise. And it's painful for them not to be in paradise. By the way, it's painful. They will look at the hellfire and they will get scared. And say, oh Allah, please don't let us in the hellfire. And it's painful for them. So their uncertainty as to where they're going to go is extremely painful. So they're going to be on the Araf, on the mountains between paradise and the hellfire. They'll be there for a while. After some time, Allah will let them into paradise. That's the fifth type. Fourth type, uh, what the Prophet wasallam called... Oh, the scholars called Ahlul Fatwa. Ahlul Fatwa. These are the people who did not come face to face with the true message of Islam. People who did not get to know Islam for what it is. Either they lived at a time where they never heard about Islam. Like, let's say, um, the natives of North America, 600 years ago. Did they hear about Islam? Most likely not. The indigenous in Australia, have, you, have they ever heard about Islam? Most likely not. Like the ones who lived 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago. What about these people? These are called Ahlul Fatra. These are people who did not receive the message. And by the way, today there is a lot of Ahlul Fatwa. There are people who never got to see the true message of Islam. All they know about Islam is ISIS on the news. Or they've seen a couple of Muslims behave in a certain way. Okay, that, well, that's what Islam is, right? But they never really got to know that Islam is about worshipping Allah alone, loving Allah alone, and being truthful, and being honest, following the messengers of Allah Sallam. They've never come across that. These people, most likely, they are from Ahl Fatra. Ahl Fatra, these are people who never came face to face with Islam. So they did not reject Islam. Why? Because they never came face to face with it. And if they happen to reject what's called Islam, maybe they're not rejecting Islam, but they reject the image of that is shown in the media about Islam. So Allah SWT does not send in the hellfire someone unless they have refused the truth. Unless they have refused the truth. But these people, what we call them in this dunya, like how do we deal with them? Are they Muslim or non-Muslim? 
the non-Muslim. Muslim and Kafir, are they Kafir? They are Kafir, yes. But on the day of judgment, Allah will deal with them. How will Allah deal with them? Anyone knows? That's a very interesting question. Ahl al-Fatwa. People who never came face to face with the truth. People who were never offered, offered the truth of Islam. What will happen today on the day of judgment? Allah will have a test for them. Allah will have a test for them. Allah will speak to them directly. He will say, Man ana? They will say, Who am I? They will say, You are Allah. They will know Him. And so Allah will bring something that looks like. He, so he says, Isn't it right upon you to obey me? They say, Yes, we we'll obey you. So Allah will bring something that looks like that looks like a fire. Allah says, Alqu anfusakum fiha. Throw yourselves into it. You recognize I'm Allah. You recognize you have to obey me. I'm commanding you, ordering you, jump here in this fire. It's not the hellfire, a fire. Jump in it. Those who say we hear and obey and they jump, it will be paradise for them. Those who refuse, basically they disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will end up in the hellfire. That's what the Prophet said about Ahlul Fatra. Okay? Among Ahlul Fatra is someone who lost their mind. Like um, uh, a mentally, I, don't know, I mean, like a crazy person. A person who cannot make sense of things. Okay? That person from Ahl Fatra. A deaf person who never heard about Islam and never heard about the truth and never read about it. Okay? Then he's part of it. An older person at the time of the Prophet, there were old people who had inertia or maybe Alzheimer. And they could not understand or make sense of what was said or what was done, right? These people are from Ahl Fatra. They didn't hear the truth. They will be tested on the day of judgment. And that shows the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا We shall not punish, meaning in the hellfire, unless we have revealed or sent a messenger. If you don't hear the truth, you're not accountable for that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fair. So no one will enter the hellfire except those who refuse faith, who refuse belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Next time, Allah is going to give us beautiful two analogies in the Qur'an about the fire and about the rain. And these are important, important things. Mithal al-nar wa mithal al-ma'a. Okay? These are important uh, like analogies in the Qur'an that happen a few times. And it's important to understand them. And they have to do with the hypocrites. And then we will move on to the message of the Qur'an. Inshallah, this will be next week. In the meantime, we can take some questions. Questions? Yes. Yes. مثلهم كمثل الذي استوقد نارا. We're gonna start next week, inshallah. There. Yes, Muhammad. It's not really like a question, but it's like an example. Of the Go ahead. Stories. Go ahead, please. So, like, the hypocrite is like one of those flowers that came in from like a different country that's not allowed in the country. Okay, hypocrite is like a flower that came into the country and they're not allowed in the no, country. Like one of those flowers that like spread diseases, but they look so beautiful. A flower that spreads diseases, but they look beautiful. That's interesting. That's interesting. Mashallah. Okay. Zakalkhariz. I mean, there are things that seem to be beautiful, but if you mess with them, they actually might be really bad. Again, right? They might be really bad. So that's probably a good example. Yes, and, tr and true. Uh, actually, the Prophet ﷺ talked about a hypocrite who recites Quran. فَمَثَلُهُمْ كَمَثَلِ الْرَيْحَانَ لِيحُهَا طَيِّبْ وَطَعْمُهَا مُرْهَا They're like this sort of flower. I don't know, what's Rayhan in English? Rayhana. I don't know what's Rayhana in English, really, what type of flower it is. But, it's like this type of flower that has beautiful smell because they recite Quran. Hypocrite, but recites Quran. Because of the Quran, you find this beautiful smell from them. Basically, their presence might be nice, but its taste is bitter. And again, that's the hypocrite. They look outside, they're really nice because they recite Quran, they seem to be doing good things. But when you truly test them and deal with them, <laughs> they're really bad people. Okay? So that's an example the Prophet gave for hypocrites.
Any questions? Yes. So the last week uh, you are trying to establish the link of al Islam in the story of Adam Musa and Islam and the other is the Islam. So I couldn't get the point there. I tell you the point was arousing curiosity. We said Musa uh, al Khadr, al Khadr, al Khadr. Uh, he did not give answers to Musa السلام, straight away. And he did not explain the situation to Musa السلام, before. But he knew everything he was going to do was going to puzzle Musa السلام, and challenge him. And he wanted that. Because he wanted to arouse curiosity and interest in order for him to really be into the learning process. And then he, he gave him the, 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 the lessons. Allah in the Quran is challenging the Arabs with letters. Like the Arabs don't, like, you don't find two Arabs speaking, one of them says A, B, C, like something like, what are you talking about? Like, it doesn't make sense. So Allah is starting with these, so that an Arab would say, what does that mean? What does that mean? I mean, that resonates, but it, I don't know what it means. What is this for? So arousing the level of curiosity, so, we can, okay, let me find out. Maybe the, something else will explain it. Okay? So that's the point, about arousing curiosity. Yes. Yeah. From the uh, you mentioned three types of performance. Yes. Uh, how are you considered as like three types? So when you mention about how to deal with someone who you, you do not like or 